about to be back again with another one. What's going on, Ted? Look, same stuff, different day. <laughs> same stuff, different day. Just, just like that. Same stuff, different day. Different day. So today's mm-hmm. topic is, I hate being the same age as old people. <laughs> mm-hmm. Listen. Yes, yeah, I'm okay. listening. I'm listening. Um, it, it, it is, it is, it is crazy. I mean, you know, we all get older. Yeah. Um, but like in my mind, in your my mind, mind, in your mind, you know, I used to be able to say my mind was like 25. Now my mind is probably like 40. <laughs> really? Oh, so you've gotten older. <laughs> my, yes. Like I can't okay. even say because. You know, I was just in school, and I'm and I'm like algebra. I couldn't pass algebra when I was seventeen. I'm not gonna pass it at fifty three. Mm, I got you. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't think it's possible. I mean, it might be possible. It's possible. Um, it's possible. But I don't think so. Mm. So yes, um, we are at that age where where. Um, we're at that age. <laughs> We're at the age that we thought, you know, was so, so, so far away. I remember one time, and my cousin, she will die laughing because I might have been about 12 or 13, maybe 14. Yeah. And I was like, oh, how old are you? And she was like 25. And I was like, Johnny, ah, oh my God. Like, <laughs> you got days to live, girlfriend. <laughs> and, uh, Logan's run, you so am. old. Yeah. Right, um, and she was like, "It's not that old." I was like, "Yes, it is." And now I'm 25 times two plus some. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's like I see these. Well, I see every things in general, and somebody will be mm-hmm. like, you know, they'll say somebody's age, and they'll be like, "Oh yeah, I'm 40, I'm 42," and I say to myself, "Whoa, I hope I don't look like that." <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, wow, because <laughs> at 50, yeah, but 40 is not old. It's not, but you know, some people are just dried out prematurely. I mean, it don't make no sense. I mean, I know life is hard, but damn, throw some cocoa butter on along the way. I mean, it's like, <laughs> shit. Yeah. If you standing on life, the line, the line of life is hard, but you can moisturize along the way. Damn. Listen, sometimes it's so hard to. You know, like the moisture, like, you know, it's so funny, okay, because dating myself, not really. You know, we grew up, you know, your parents put Vaseline on you. Vaseline really is a drying element, so maybe they just they is it? the Vaseline. I thought Vaseline, and, if anything, locked in whatever moisture is in your skin already. I mean, you know, it's it's a, it's a petroleum oil, but still, it, I mean, dry out your skin? Because is your, is your skin really going to absorb does your skin really absorb petroleum oil? Well, I don't think it's when you put Vaseline on. It's not a matter of it um, absorbing into your skin, but what it will do is it prevents your skin harm from happening to your skin once the petroleum is on your skin. You that was a whole thing, right? like you know, in the old days, and maybe I don't know who still does it today. These young people and stuff like that. But back in the days when women would fight, they put that Vaseline on because they want to prevent from being scratched the f up. Right. So you can't get right. a grip on them. Right. So I mean, you know, I, I don't know. So you know what I'm doing? Does your skin? Um, You're googling it, aren't you? Does your skin? Absorb petroleum oil, aka Vaseline. Mm-hmm. And what does it say? So let's see what Google says. The skin does not easily absorb petroleum jelly. Mm-hmm. This means that it is not really a moisturizer. The barrier that can keep dirt out and prevent moisture loss. Right. But see, that's why I say that's it what I said. From losing moisture, right? But if you put Petroleum jelly on dry skin, but you just hold it in the dry, and you're not really moisturized. Yo, it's but it still could make the difference. I mean, at least it could stop you from looking ashy for the time being. Um, we know that. I mean, because that's where we come from. It may not be moisturizing, but it'll, it'll take the edge off for sure. <laughs> it'll take the edge off for a minute, perhaps. 
You know, because you can't tell me all those ashy little, 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 little nappy headed bastards that was running around when he was younger. They was all ashy because they had petroleum jelly on. No, they was ashy as they ain't have jack on. They were, listen, I don't know why they were ashy, but I know, you know, those those people that you're talking about are now, you know, our age. And oh, yeah, yeah those people, and, those people are now listening. Rihanna, those people are now, uh, uh, freaking Denzel Washington now, you know, they, they don't learned how to moisturize. <laughs> no, but that's why some of these people look still hard because if you're oh. still using Vaseline, you're not really moisturizing. All right, well, you want to take a dare say, yeah, the ones that's looking rough, they're like, yeah, I'm 42. You'd be like, God damn, my 60 year old grandma looks younger than you, like, you know, because he's still rocking the Vaseline. Like, yo, did you say my 60 year old grandma? Well, I don't have a 60 year old grandma, but I, I, I'm just making conversation. <laughs> oh, okay, damn. Right, listen, just making conversation. The topic is the topic is the topic I is age is these old people. As old people, okay, but and here's the thing: we are the same. I we hate are being the same, same age as these old people because they old because and they the frumpy. Old we are the old people, but there's some old people amongst us, our peers. They don't got frumpy. Like I, I, I don't understand. We come from a generation where we were a hip generation. We're like we, we were knee deep in ourselves in the '80s. New Jack Swing and the colors and the dancing and the jumping around and the braids and the dreads and oh, you know God, and Timberland like boots like and you know all the while you know. We, we were the cool kids. So now that we're all older, they keep portraying people our age and be like, you know, like, all right, now, nah, and, uh, and, oh, and you kids. And I'm like, wait a minute. How, how, where, how do we go from New Jack Swing to this? You know, I mean, come on. Really? Okay. Let's, now let's, we the old people like, oh, like you okay. never owned a pair of Jordans? Like, really? You just walking around, you wear them in the old Velcro Walmart shoes now? Like, really? Okay, so you're taking this like, you know, we're old, but we're not frumpy. And I'm taking this like, we're old, and no, we're not frumpy. However, the old gray mare, she ain't what she used to be. She ain't what she used to be. All right, that's you granted. Know? But the whole thing is, I hate being the same age as these old people. Is because I think they're giving us a bad name. People our age range are giving people... You know, I mean, yeah, we're the doctors and we're the school principals and the superintendents and we're the head of neurology and, you know, we're, we're, we're all of that now, right? But no, I think the teenagers are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you wish they would. You are you talk about these retarded people we call the city's youth? Is that what you're talking about? No, I told you my girlfriend was ten years old and she was a principal, making six figures. Ten years old. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, I got you. You know. <laughs> um, you know. Yeah, but the, uh, but the requirements and, she, and that's a hustle. You know, the, today's requirements for them to do these jobs. Huh? No, I'm sorry, I'm just interrupting. Go ahead. She went on to become the CEO of a, a charter company at 15. <laughs> I mean, so. Not literally, people. I don't I think did, that that's just her being facetious, anymore. you know? Yeah. I think it's the teenagers, but here's the thing. Clear it up, man. People going to think you're really about. talking about some this type of genius 15 year old principal. Clear that okay. up real quick, Nana, about the person you're talking about. She's not 15. <sighs> If, listen, if people can't tell that I'm being facetious and saying that she's 10 making six figures, I mean, but then again, you know, I think these little TikTok kids are making six figures. You be um, on main news next to you, you know, the story be a CNN, CNN and they'll be, they'll be uh, reposting this street, this podcast, talking about breaking news somewhere out there. There's a 15 year old CEO. We need to find this person. But there are 15 year CEOs. Mm hmm. Okay, why? Well, listen, I don't have time to Google that because I want to get to the point that I think that you're missing. The point that you're missing is what is the point that I'm missing? That what yes, I'm missing? we we came from a cool generation, you know. So we think. So we know. Okay, but I mean, our parents' generation was cool is, too, but ours was no joke either. We 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 created some. Come on, think of all the good stuff that came out of our generation: video games the internet all of that came out of our generation <laughs> okay can you do the same things that you could do when you were oh here we go 25 it depends on what you're talking about now mm -hmm. you talking about 
clack, clack, clack. <laughs> maybe with the, maybe not with the same. <laughs> but then again, see, this is the difference. All right, we're, 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 we're talking about clapping the cheeks. Well, I'm talking about clapping the cheeks, right? Um, Yes, no doubt I have more energy at 25, but I ain't have more experience at 25. If only I could merge the two, the energy with the experience. See, the, okay. the, the experience I got now, yeah, I would outdo 20 because all 25-year-old all me was, 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 was energy, you know what I'm saying? But 54-year-old me is, you know, experience, you know? 54-year-old me, now you know, know how to burn that candle, you know, and, you know, make things right <laughs> okay mm -hmm. right but even in the making it right you can only make it so right because we sleep a lot more than we used to <laughs> especially after <laughs> <laughs> oh my god mm. right so pass out what the with, with, with the richard Pryor saying um in um harlem nights when uh oh, she when it's she said sugar night. ray can you live me all more all night and all morning and he was like how about what like he's like like 15 minutes hard fucking and then like eight hours of comatose like sleep <laughs> yeah and that's what i'm talking i mean you know i'm i am officially in menopause are you did your doctor tell you that or well, this is just what you figure because you know your body. Is this, huh? is this official? Is this what your doctor told you? Or this is what you figure because so, that's how you feel? Menopause, the official start of menopause happens when you do not have a cycle for a year. Holy cow. You've crossed that branch mark. Okay, you know I've crossed it. No so, more blood. Yeah. I to act like I know. Like, well, I'm, just, I'm, I'm doing pad checks. You know, this is uh, the... Uh, so you saying you don't know? I don't know. I, I know what I'm told. Look, you don't change the subject. I know so what I'm told. I know what I'm told. Okay. And if you're trying to say the blood flood is over for you and it's official that you've officially crossed one year, then that's it. You know, no more cherry sticks for you. It's all good. <laughs> yes. It's I'm happy for you. It's been more than a year. Ooh. And what was crazy was that it would be a, it would be 11 months and then it would come. The milk has gone and bad. And I'd have to start all over again. Like, so it's like, okay, 11 months, and we have it for like two days. And then it was like, ha ha, you thought you were getting out of this. Um, so, yes, now I am officially in menopause. Ooh, all right. So, man, so basically your club, you just shot up at all times. Blah, blah, blah. Ain't nothing happening out of there. You know what I'm saying? The Genotians can't make no more clones out of there. <laughs> and. You know that they're like so. My body has changed, even in terms of intimacy. Okay, all right. If you say so. You know. I mean, I mean, that's what I mean. I know that's what you're saying. Like, okay, you know, these changes are in your body. You know, and you feel these changes. Okay, I got you. Okay. I I'm, not, I'm, I, not, I, I'm not. I'm not saying. I'm not saying anything else to the breaker of peaches. <sighs> Look. That's all. I, that's all I gotta say about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You broke peaches. You wanna act like that didn't happen. Okay. It's okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No. You got nothing? Got nothing? You know what? I'm only gonna get so slick with the mouth today. All right, we ain't we ain't gonna we ain't gonna go there today and talk about the breaking of peaches. Broken peaches. Mm -hmm. We ain't we ain't gonna get into that today. All right. If you say mm -hmm. you're going through menopause, I believe you. All right, and that, mm -hmm. that's that's where we're gonna leave it, and we're gonna move on. Okay, mm -hmm. you and menopause mm -hmm. officially, mm -hmm. yeah, but okay. you still hate being the same age as these old people, even though uh, the river's gone dry. Yeah, uh, the, well, the, the, the hens are snatched from the eggs are out the hen house. You're annoying. I'm just saying. I mean, these the eggs are out the hen house. Yep. No more need well, for yes, on leg on no. But then again, you kind of, I mean, you know, it's, it's a catch-22, right? All right, what's the catch-22? Um, Getting to the age where, like, you know, getting to menopause, so you don't have your cycle anymore. Um, 
which is good, right? I, I think, you know, when you get your, when a young girl gets her period, she can't wait for it to be over. And I know when Lenny got her cycle, she's like, oh my God, this is, when is this going to end? And I'm like, never. <laughs> because, and that was before I, you know, was in menopause, but now I'm, I'm, I'm in menopause. And I'm like, right. you know, there, there is a light at the end of this tunnel, mm -hmm. but it does not feel like that. Wow. Okay. Well, since we're sharing what happens when you get older, I can't sit up. I can't stand up or sit down without making noise. And and that's funny okay. to me because when you when you when you are younger and you see older people and they're doing these things, you think they just going, you know, going through the motions or whatever. You don't understand it until you get to this age and you just wake up one day and when you get up it's ah when you sit down it's like mm, god damn you know everybody did that's oh like <laughs> jeez and god forbid you got to get on the floor like you got to get down to get up underneath something like i did a week ago i had to get up underneath this desk <laughs> I'm gonna tell you, baby. Right Somebody should have just knocked I, me down because I'm trying to ease myself down to the floor, and it takes me a good like 40 seconds to get to the floor from a standing position because I'm grabbing on this shit, and I'm like, because mm, I gotta be careful because I don't want to go down too fast on my knees, and you know, and I gotta put soft things under my knees because my knees can't take the pressure of being on yeah. my knees. So it's like, but your knees can't take the pressure of your own weight. Yeah, not on a hard surface. No, not my listen. Mine can barely take the pressure of my own weight on the soft surface. I'm like, oh, I'm my like, god. oh my god, come on. Oh, <sighs> it's it's a terrible thing, man. Just just old, and your knees ain't what they supposed to be, and it's like, ooh, boy. And it, and if you're heavy, you know, and I'm, you know, I'm a big dude. I'm six two, two eighty was what it was when I went to the doctor last time. Uh, two seventy five okay. with the keys up my pocket in my wallet, but you know, scale said two eighty. <laughs> Okay. Um, <laughs> and uh yeah, that's that I mean we, we, I mean if your shit ain't rock solid, that's a lot of weight, you know. And I'm strong, you know, but for the most part. Um I I, I try to keep my body strong for my 280. I mean, I'm not Pillsbury 280, you know what I'm saying? I'm not Terry Crews 280 no. either, but I'm like, you know, I can still manage, but if I don't stay on top of it, if I don't go to the gym at least twice a week, then my body starts to feel like um i feel my age i What's feel my age <laughs> yeah That's terrible but i still hate being the same age as these old people because in my mind i'm still 18 in my brain berry and that is the point i don't like i, I don't feel 50, I, like so i don't feel 54 mm -hmm. like maybe mentally and emotionally i mean yeah but my body is it's my my so, oh my god <laughs> they have this test at work right mm -hmm. and it's like to test your heart age mm -hmm. um and it's like you know how old are you and then they ask you all these questions and and you know you you put in your 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 54 and blah 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 and and my my heart age is like 80 and I was like, that's rude and disrespectful <laughs> and i wholeheartedly uh -huh. disagree uh-huh and I'm taking this test over because I failed. <laughs> mm. So, oh. I mean, yeah, that's some bull. My, my, my heart age is eight. Mm. Okay, I don't know well. who, who came up with that test, but they lied. Well, they weren't. They 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 were talking, I guess, because of your physical health. They weren't necessarily going by your. Um, you know the the, the 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 little girl in you and the, the you know the chipper you know and the, the one in you that enjoys you know silly things and stuff like that i think that's the problem yeah. i think the problem with us and uh the people we hate being the same age is that and maybe people look at us the same way when we're not being relaxed and being ourselves i think a lot of people who we see that seem to be stiff to us and foggy it's just because we don't get to see that fun loose side. You know, old, older people don't tend to tend to show 
that side of them. I mean, now it's horrible that people like, you know, some people, they get like, say, if you're into, I don't know, maybe you're into action figures or dolls collecting or, you know, whatever. And uh, mm -hmm. a quote unquote serious person may think that, think of that as childish things like, oh, you're supposed to be done with childish things and, you know, and all of that. And actually there was a, um, a news report recently where they were saying um, because of the pandemic, um, people adults have gotten back in toys like things like legos and stuff like that and it's still mm -hmm. kind of like popular and trending and i'm like well why should you just because you mature to a point where okay you're old enough to indulge in the finer things that the world has to offer wine and you know and gucci prada whatever you know or mm -hmm. you know you may decide to take part in highbrow entertainment the opera you know and things of that sort or you know uh dramatic films you know these ridiculous movies they be coming out with that i don't even know why mm -hmm. they, but anyway um you know serious you know quote unquote adult things but mm -hmm. if, if you enjoy I don't know, Hot Wheels cars and stuff like that, and you happen to be a, a medical doctor or whatever, you know, if that's what makes you happy in your off time, then why not? You know, why well, should someone saying, make you feel bad about indulging in the things you enjoy because you're not 16 anymore? Listen, I will say this. I remember when I would come home from work mm -hmm. and I would watch cartoons. Mm hmm. And and it do. was and, and honestly it was like I have put up with so much bullshit today, <laughs> right? I need to just not think seriously about anything. Mm -hmm. Um, and I was okay with that. Like, you know, I was not a fuddy duddy, and I would tell people. Mm -hmm. I watch cartoons. Um, SpongeBob is one of my best friends. <laughs> Actually, I, I didn't like SpongeBob, but. You watched it anyway. Um, you didn't like it, but you watched right, it but anyway. Just yeah, just to take that edge off of the seriousness. Of, and to be perfectly honest, mm -hmm. the people that we're the same age as, yeah. we they, like sometimes we need to take a deep breath. Like life is not that damn serious. I mean, it is, but it's not. Mm. Well, yeah, you're right. I mean, life is serious. And, you know, and that's, I think that's the part about maturity. Being mature is knowing when it's time to play and knowing when it's time to not. Because, you know, every moment of life is not to be played with, you know. And that's, that's what life really boils down to. So it's like when it's time to, if you got a job and you got to work to pay your bills, you know, get your ass up and go to work. You can't stay home and play Call of Duty all day. You got to get up and go to work. That's being responsible. You know, right. um, and when you get your paycheck, you know, it's your responsibility to put enough of it away to cover your bills and not just blow it in the club or um, <laughs> the thing that my friends, you know, still rig me, rib me about to this day is that my first job when I was 16 years old and I was mm -hmm. working for the, I had a good job too. My, my first job was working as a male groom clerk for the equitable on um, 6th Avenue and 50, 51st Street. Um, mm -hmm. over there in Rockefeller Center, that was my first job. And back then in the 80s, minimum wage was like what 336 an hour or something like that. So that's exactly what I was making. But I got my first okay. paycheck. <laughs> my first paycheck, I blew the same day that I got it in the video arcade. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And when Nobody I told my friends that it was like, yo, Man, let's go let you playing whatever. It wasn't even Pac. We was already beyond Pac-Man by, by the time 1986 came around. By the time that yeah, I can't even I don't even remember. I'd have to do a quick Google search to see what games were actually popular in 1986 to refresh my memory memory to okay. tell you exactly mm -hmm. what it was I blew it on. But the point was, you know, Manhattan had um great arcades back then. And um I literally got my paycheck. I went down to the video arcade. I cashed that shit in to hold my whole paycheck at the quarters. <laughs> and I stayed no, in that didn't. video game arcade all night. No, you did not. I swear to God I did. I swear to God I did. And when I went home and then the weekend came, my friends were like, yo, let's do so-and-so. And I was like, nah, I ain't got no money. And they were like... <laughs> didn't you just like get your first paycheck what do you mean you don't got no money and i'm like yes i went to the video arcade with the money you know and that's it i had enough money to get home and that's about it right 
And they, and even then, they were like, that is the most ridiculous thing. That is the dumbest thing. We used to call stupid shit that we would say a five or a ten. A five, if it was like, okay, sort of stupid. And it was ten, if it was like way stupid. That was a ten. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, that's a goddamn ten. How are you going to get your very first paycheck? And now, not even a day after, you ain't got the shit to show for. You went to a video arcade and blew your whole paycheck. We're like, yep. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the beauty of living under your mother's roof and being a kid okay. to have that kind of cushion um but damn i don't, I don't even know why we went there but um we went there <laughs> <laughs> talking about not being fuddy duddy not being you know and you just you know giving away your money to the video game people yeah um yeah oh yeah so yeah being but life is being responsible but when it's time to be responsible being serious when it's time to be serious but then you know you gotta have fun too and no matter how that fun manifests i mean people do the most ridiculous things but if that's fun for you that's fine you got people that like to go on the weekend and like to climb through mud you know iron man and all of that and you know it's health and it's all that like yeah that ain't my idea of good time you know um <laughs> And like right, and uh, honestly, like right now, another thing, Nana, crowds, yeah. crowds. Oh, Listen. that part, I'm fuddy duddy. Don't traumatize me. Yeah, I'm full Don't fifty four when it comes to crowds. Oh, we, we, I'm, and it's crazy, right? Because we are people, we are people, people, but we don't like people. <laughs> mm -mm. I don't got a problem with people. I just don't like them. And it's like <laughs> it's insane. I, the I, can't stand I just can't stand them. I, I I'm like yo in out. There's a very short list of people who I actually enjoy their company and don't mind being around for hours on end. You know, mm -hmm. that's a very short list of people who I have things in common with where it's not tedious being around them. Everybody else, it's like hi, bye. I don't. Um, I, I enjoy a good party, but only if I have a clear and defined exit strategy and um, and, I, and I'm free to leave whenever I want. Those are the type of part. But then again, what party isn't? But I'm just saying, um, mm. you know, get in, get out, you know, and even that mm. that's like, you know, hey, there's there's, um, you know, you can count. I can count on one hand how many events I'd want to go to and actually be around people for a length of time now if i'm doing something like entertainment or business wise like um if i was going to a seminar or something like that or a music festival or conference and stuff like that certain scenarios i'll put up with because that's truly where i want to be you know mm -hmm. but other than that this like, mm -hmm. Times square like you know new year celebration it's raining and cold or whatever and people want to be in Times square to see a ball drop <laughs> out of here with that Wait. Mm -hmm. You've become a cry to the old man, which I told you to, to not own. But this from the man who will be the last one to leave the party? I usually am the last one to leave the party if I'm having a good time. If I go to a party and I'm one of those moves where I want to dance because I love to dance and I'm cutting up a rug and I'm feeling real good, yeah, I'll shut the party down. But usually in a scenario like that, the atmosphere is loose enough where I feel comfortable. You know what I'm saying? You remember the old days you go to a club and it's like shoulder to shoulder with strangers on the dance floor and stuff like that. You could barely get your shit off and turn around because you'd bump into somebody <laughs> and all of that. I'm like, if I happen to find myself in an environment like that, trust me, I'm not going to be there long. I, I won't be shutting that one down, you know. But if it's like people are spread out a little bit and you got like an arm's length, you know, or at least a half arm's length between you and the people around you and stuff like that. I, I'm a little more comfortable and, you know, um, if it's a good backyard party or something like that or a good house party, I may shut that down if I'm having a good time. But generally, you know, no. Mm -hmm. Gotta be having a good time. Cause look, I think I think Joyce and James lust before us for her um, Joyce's party. Um, you think like they left before us? Yes. Um, I don't know why. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I ain't gonna talk shit. <laughs> so we was fighting over that one chicken when that was in the. <laughs> yeah, they was doing our people wrong that night. It's like, yo, you can't be having a party of rationing food out like that. That's crazy. But 
it was still a good time because they're good people. They're beautiful people. Yeah, so, you know, sometimes, so even in a situation like that, when the people are really good, yeah, you'll mm -hmm. split a bag of Doritos with the rest of the party goers or whatever. And, you know, everybody take a drink through the, with a the thimble and stuff like that. Because, you know what, these are good people. We having a good time, you know. They're great, they're great people. They, they're beautiful so people. Yeah, they really, I miss them. I haven't seen them probably since that party. Yeah, I think I don't even, yeah, that was a couple of years ago. I missed them. They are truly um, some of my uh, best friends that I have, which I don't have a lot. And those two are definitely them and their family, because actually, like everybody in their family, their sons and, you know, it's 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 truly like no exaggeration. It's like family whenever I'm, whenever I'm around them, you know, where their kid, you know, their kids refer to me as uncle and stuff like that. So it's like, you know. Yeah. Well, I met them one time, and I am in love with Joyce. I, I am in love. Everybody with her. loves I Joyce. I just, I could, huh? Everybody loves Joyce. Yeah, I haven't met a one person. You have to. I haven't met one you person that felt him. like, eh, you know, like everybody loves that woman. If you don't love Joyce, something's wrong with you. Something's wrong with you. If you, you don't love you, that, you've woman. been drinking hate raid and you choking on that hate array with a capital H. <laughs> mm -hmm. Because she is just. Her smile is crazy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it is crazy. Yeah. Yeah, for Her real. Her smile is crazy. Yeah. And I just hope that you remember that coat that James had gotten her. Oh, yeah, that fur coat. Ooh. Yeah. Pimp oh, that was some uptown pimp shit there. That's like, that's hell up in Harlem right there. That's a, across 110th Street. Chicks trying to find a woman that's sweet. Oh yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah. That's well, just... yes. I want that coat. Yeah, yeah. That was, that was, that was pimpalicious. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, I'm not in the. I'm not. You know, I guess you know. You know, don't people. You know, the pita and the, you know, don't kill it. I, I, I need that coat. I need one fur coat in my lifetime. You know what I'm saying? I mean, yeah. I'd, I'd feel better if, like, well, that those, those bears had cancer and they was going to go anyway, so we just harvested their skins, you know, they gave back. It's kind of like the organ donation on a driver's license kind of deal. I don't care what the reason is. On our whatever anniversary, probably first, I like I like that for a cold case. Uh, we'll, we'll see. I mean, hell, shit, YouTube, yo, get them likes and subscribes, you know what I'm saying? Get this woman a fur coat, because y'all get it popping, and y'all get this monetization and all of that, then, yo, <laughs> when Miss Ted walks into her room, you'll be hearing, wicka, wicka, wow, wow, wicka, wow, wow, chicken, chicken, wow, wicka, chicka, wow, 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 well, 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 she's Foxy, Foxy Brown. <laughs> and I like James. Hey, hey, hey. I mean, it's crazy though, right? So James yeah. is what sixty, whatever, sixty. They're in their late. They're well. I'm fifty four, so I would say they're in their mid sixties by now. Yeah. Because it wasn't it her sixty fifth birthday or her sixtieth birthday. Oh, so they up there? They're in the upper sixties. If that was the case, yeah. Because I know they're I definitely they're, the they're a generation birthday. before us. They they weren't quite as old as my parents, but um, yeah, they're in their upper sixties. Yeah, I would say that. And don't look a day over forty. Yeah, no, they look good. Black do not crack in that part of town, that's for sure. I know, because I was looking at James like, okay, I see you, oh, sir. Oh yeah, James. Oh James, he's oh, he's something else. That's yes, that, that, that 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 old man is ornery right there, man. He, you call him or something. He got a way of looking at you, like like he just got a way of looking through you, and to let you know, you know, like yo. Fuck what you want to do? You want to put your dick on the table? Yo, put your shit. I put my dick on the table right now, like. <laughs> Yo, he said to me, he said, hey, what's your name? I said, well, Rock calls me Ted. He said, I don't care what he calls you. But she, <laughs> yeah. Like, okay. yeah, I don't know if it was nurse. You could just call me Teddy. He said, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Don't be looking at me, sir. I see you. But what was crazy the way he looked, they, they look at each other. Yeah, they, they love each other. They've been together for so long. Um, oh. They've been together so long, and it is, and they've been through. I mean, they've through like you know 
uh, abusive exes to uh, deaths of, of, of spouses and, and, and children and cousins. But then again, everybody, every family deals with that. But they've, they've been there for each other through all of that. And as far as I know, they've never been apart. Like, you know, I mean, like, I, I, I know... There's been short spurts where things might not have been all sweet in their household and stuff like that. And, you know, and, and they might have had a difference of opinion where, OK, uh, dick and pussy was withheld on both ends at one point or another, you know. But for the most part, they've, you know, um, they've been there for each other for everything through divorces and all of that and dealing with the crazy, you know, ex and divorcing. Um, their their um spouses before, like um, not without putting his business oh, in the street, but like James was married, and you know, and he kind of okay. went through it with with his wife and the divorce, and like all the lot, just like so many other fellas I know, um, that get divorced, yo, their lives are fucked up. Like I got dudes right now that are caught up in the whole alimony and child support thing, but yet now they got a woman now and they trying to live now and trying and they, things are getting so expensive and they trying to get it together. This is a whole other topic of conversation too. I know. know where, the same thing. Oh my God. Like, well, you got dudes just trying to make a living and granted they got a, a responsibility to take care of their children, but it's like, yo, it's like their ex got their kids in a house with another dude who's working and you, this guy has to give up half his paycheck to put into their household and yet, so she has the benefit of her paycheck her man's paycheck and half your paycheck and meanwhile you gotta try to survive in society with half a paycheck if you're lucky okay, you, you find a good woman and that woman and that's where I'm folding it back to Joyce understands that okay, I know your paycheck would be this but it's that because you're in that situation but I love you and I'm with you and I know guys in that situation right now too where fortunately they found good women and you gotta, you know, when it comes to finances you gotta let them know what it is and let them know why you don't have full access to your check and it's just crazy because the man is sitting there the man ain't got the kids but his paycheck is cut in half and he's sitting there without his kids and has to find a way and like i said if you're with a good woman a good woman is not why would she be with you if it's a problem for you you shouldn't be with them if it's a problem for you well yeah, yeah, uh, yeah you know when you get to that point in your relationship because usually when you first meet somebody and y'all talk about things and you know and everything's not going to be 100 percent clear when you meet them but then if he don't talk him to talk his way out the drawers you give him the drawers and oh and then once he put it on you like, ooh, you know and then you, you get to another level but then once y'all decide to become a couple and relationship and live together, then you got to talk about money at that point. And at that point is when she got to make a decision like, OK, this is what he's bringing home and this is what he got. And this is what it is. Um, and and, and y'all got to figure out your budget and she got to be good with it. And um, yeah, yeah, for not for nothing, man, a lot of dudes I know that are in that situation that have had um, women were good women that rode with them in those situations so you know y'all are out there yeah, yeah i'm not taking nothing away from y'all there's good women out there that put that not put up but that will um give a man a chance that's in a situation where a divorce alimony child support situation where he doesn't have full access to his resources but i'll tell you what <laughs> when the child turns 18 and my uncle kind of went through that too with his um my uncle went through that with his ex where they had a daughter and he was paying child support and all of that and it was all good and long story short um my cousin had went to um like went to college and moms didn't say anything like she didn't say anything to the courts and she was still collecting the child support payments even though uh, my cousin was in college so the long and the short of that was my uncle had to go and put the kibosh on that and he continued to send the support straight to my cousin, but, you know, had to cut my aunt off, you know, and it was just kind of funky because it's like, yo, that's crazy. You sitting up there, you got another dude in the house with you and you still taking that man's money? Like, come on, man. Come on. That's yeah, another that's topic of conversation whole... too to talk yeah. about the whole child support and the yeah. way the modern system, the way it is. It got to be a wet away, and it because it's so unfair to men. It really is. Well, and and, and I will say this. Um, uh oh, here we go. I will say that it. I will say that it's un, it's an unfair um, system. I won't say that it's unfair to 
men alone mm -hmm. because I do know of women who are paying child support. Um, and, you know, obviously that's probably the ex an exception and not the rule. So I will say it's an unfair system, right? There definitely yeah. needs to be some modifications. Yeah. And with that said, you know, my situation with Raina's uh, donor, I never mm. took him to court for um, right. child support. Right. I, I, that, and that was a choice that I made. It's a lot of, it's a choice that a lot of women made. And I was struggling. Like you knew that I, I was struggling. I was five minutes from finding a corner, a pole, a lap. And there were days where I would have done the alley. Mm. I like I, I was ready. Okay. Um, That's and, a damn and, shame. You know, my favorite story. Yeah, go ahead. And I tell you, I went three years without a coat in New York City, mm -hmm. in New York State. Three years, no coat, so that Raina could have the things that she needed. You know, people yeah. do what they got to. You know, what they what they feel they have to do. So, in that vein of you know having a good woman who understands, you know. I would say it's more so, yes, you have to have a good woman that understands. But you also have to be a man that is worth understanding. Mm. You know, because um, if you are just somebody out here, and, and all you, like I knew a guy and all he did was complain about the alimony that he had to pay his wife. Somebody he was dating? For his dinner. Yes. Mm-hmm. And I mean, all he did was complain about it. Right. And I mean, you're mad and salty about it, but through your own admission, she has had the kids. You weren't even there because you were working and you were doing this and you were out here doing all of what you were doing. Right. She never had another man in the house. And you're complaining about the, um, the you know, the, the alimony and the child support when she never had another man in the house mean, like she didn't have a boyfriend or not while he was paying her this never, money no no okay and it turns out and again we're off topic but that's what old people do that's what old people um, do <laughs> he it's like he broke up their marriage because he kept cheating on her and like the fifth time she was like i'm not doing this anymore and it was like yeah but you forgave me the last four times come on you serious right now um and she was like, enough is enough. So you keep bringing people in here. Like, you're just mad. And he told me one day, he told me, he was like, you know, she didn't have to divorce me. Like, so you're mad that she divorced you because if she didn't divorce you, then you wouldn't be paying alimony and child support. And he was like, yeah, and I need to get her a boyfriend. <laughs> so <laughs> That wasn't going to help the situation. All the thing was going to happen was the boyfriend was going to be enjoying his money. Right. But so when I say that in his instance, I wouldn't understand that that was his situation because all you're doing is whining about it. Right. And mind you, you have a good job. You have a good, you, you should be paying what you're paying. Right. So it's just weird. Like you, so you, you need to be a man that is worth, you know, making a sacrifice for, or not even a sacrifice, but saying we're going to do this together. You know what? We need to get into this again. And I wrote it down for a topic of a future episode because we're supposed to be talking about, I hate being the same age as these old people. And, you know, and, and, and it's as interesting as what we're talking about is, we kind of mm -hmm. far away from being, I hate being the same age as these old people. Okay. Yes. So while we did digress, that is what old people do. They start talking about one thing, <laughs> and then the next thing you know, else. listen, remember the time we were talking about something and it was like, put a pin in it, because that's your thing. Put a pin in it. Okay. Yeah. And I think that was like, uh, like the, when you were on your way to work, and then when you were on your way back to work, we could not figure out for the life of us. I think we almost took the whole ride home, your whole ride home, yeah. trying to remember what we were talking about. Yeah. And I think the craziest part was we couldn't believe that we couldn't remember what we were talking about. All we knew was good. All we knew is that it was good. That's all it we was knew. a good conversation. So 
Right. When you said put a pen in it, I was like, oh, I can't wait till tomorrow. So what were we talking about? <laughs> yeah, I said, what? He was like, yeah. huh? I mean, and I was racking my brain, and it, I mean, I was doing the whole, you know, retrace your steps. <laughs> no, first we were talking about. Did we ever figure it out? I'm sure we did. Yeah, but I mean, that's what old people do. So yes, we digressed and we, you know, talked about a couple of different things. And yes, we will revisit this topic because we talk about this often. And the other thing that that our, our viewers will find that. Uh, we differ, and one of the ways that we differ is like you'll say, you know, something's unfair to men, and I go, it's unfair to people because they, like, you know, like they say, all men are dogs, well, all men are not dogs, because I know some women um, barking right now. <laughs> and so it's a, it's a, it's a, you know, it's the scale, and trust yeah. me, it, it, you know, balances out. So, yeah, we will come back to this. Um, as we long had, as you we, don't we, we have 46 minutes you know that right uh, well okay what Ooh. that's what old people do i got to to my aunt i'm telling my aunt i have to get off the phone she was like and one more thing and my aunt is okay so my mom is 79 so my aunt's like 75 76 yeah. and one more thing but you said one more thing three things ago yeah so, <laughs> i have a habit of doing uh, that yeah, yes, but but I know when I'm enjoying the person I'm talking to, some people yeah. like my like you'll never get to see now. But I'll give my old man, my father, you ain't never got to worry about that. My father, it's like yo, he only want to talk to you long enough just to get off whatever's at the top of his brain. And as soon as he's got it out, he's like, all right, it's time to go. <laughs> <laughs> so it's cool. You spoke about you speak to my father. You ain't gonna speak no. We ain't gonna be speaking no more than ten minutes. It's gonna be like bit bat boat off the phone. Yeah. Well, you know, yes. So, um, what I was going to say is, yes. we will revisit this topic. Yes. As well, long as you don't lose that paper. Well, you should be right. I'm because I'm taking notes. So hopefully you're taking notes about things that we're I'm talking about that we say. With you should be because I am. Why should I should be? Uh, that's not professional. That that's you, not professional. Huh? What? That's not professional. Is, is that professional? I said that is not professional. <gasps> not, me not taking notes is not professional? No. Is that what you said? You're supposed to be doing that, Nana. You're supposed to be the better half of us. These are things that you are supposed to be, um, you know, on top of. So... I'm, I'm counting on you, executive assistant. You know, because your your skills. I mean, if I, if I was holiday, you'd be mm, and mm, 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 did you forget anything? Props mm -hmm. to you, prop, props to you, holiday. I haven't met you yet, but you know, I like you. Okay, I've written it down. Because you, cause, cause you don't stress. You, you, you don't stress Gramps over there. You, you, don't, you don't add stress, stress to Gramps' day. Yeah, well, you know, I love Holiday. Holiday is my market executive that I support at work. And she is, she's not 10, so she's probably about, you know what? I'd give her 20. She's not 20, but um, <laughs> she's almost 20. <laughs> Almost okay. uh, no, she's probably, I think she's in her early 40s, but she's just this amazing energy, yeah. amazing spirit. She definitely doesn't make your day worse, that's for sure. I've, I've, no, I've never no, seen you, I've never seen you stress over anything involving her. Um, other people, it's, you know, mixed results, you know, <laughs> at, any given, at any given time, anybody else could give you something to, you know, frown about. Yeah. So. I should have talked about that when we were talking about working for the man because she, it's funny. She will, she will let me Kudos do whatever I want to you, do. Kudos to you, Holiday. Right? To you. Kudos. What? I'm speaking of Holiday. Oh. Kudos to you, girl. Speaking of holiday. Oh. Yeah. Kudos to you, girl. Yeah. I, she she will let me do whatever I want to do because she knows that I work. And I and, and the crazy thing is because she does that, I want to work harder 
for her. But that's the great thing about a good boss. And this is what I tell because um, in my job, I we get um, every every so often we get a new influx of young managers because unfortunately that's what our corporate structure is. They bring in managers that are younger than our industry would otherwise allow because um, they don't want to pay market rate for experienced managers. So the plus to that is that a lot of young managers get to put um, our property on their resume, which is great for them personally, you know, but they're not getting the salary. And that's what, you know, um, our company takes advantage of. But that being said, um, a lot of times these these guys, some of them, well, they they're not quite as um young as my sons much my oldest is 22 getting ready to turn 23 um but um late 20s early 30s you know these guys come in and they're my manager of course they went behind the ears so they didn't know the computer stuff but you got to get you know put them on to you know the culture and stuff like that and what i tell all of them is that look you need to learn how to manage your people your resources by recognizing that that's exactly what they are because your job you ain't going to get shit done without the people you manage so you know when you know there's going to be there may be a possibility during your term where you may have to make hard decisions if you find yourself with a problem child or something like that and you had to make hard decisions Mm -hmm. like write-ups and suspensions and things like that you may find yourself Mm -hmm. in that position but anything short of that um you a good manager and it doesn't mean bowing down to your team but you need to be fair to your team and make sure the work environment and you that your team has is the best and most um conducive environment that you can create for your people to get the job done that's what's important right. get the job done don't be overbearing i've had i've seen managers in the past that people would avoid because you would have tasks and you would complete them and they would just take that as an opportunity to put more on your plate, which would purposely make really? these people yes. avoid you because they know that's what you were about and all of that. Instead of, mm-hmm. instead of saying, hey, this is today's task. We got it done. Good job. Take a breather. We got more stuff to do tomorrow. You know? Yeah. And that makes a worker work harder for that person because they know that yeah. they know what's important and there's a nuance right. to the to the workflow, you know, not just trying to drain blood out of a rock and you know and, and, and grind you in the dust, you know, because they think it's gonna get them somewhere. And honestly, as a manager, you get nowhere by grinding your people down like that. You will not be yeah. rewarded. Because the first time yeah. something goes wrong, guess who's going first? Not the worker, you. Yeah, that's what I used to always say. But yeah, Holiday makes my life. Like, she's the only reason why I left the department that I I left. Because I liked my manager there as well. And I liked the team. Um, And I got a new market exec. And I love her. She's so funny. Um, But Holiday has my heart. Even though she, you you know, I I never, yeah, Holiday has my heart. Because like I said, and she sees what you're capable of. Yeah. And she will push you. To do better so um how to see how do we start talking about this? yes okay ah, damn oh, I, I hate old. being at the same age as talking. these old people and I we know. and we and it's great because you know what now what we're doing is that we're segueing and this is what it is when we talk that we segue the into the people the that are in our lives whether we love them or not there are people all around us that affect us and you know and and it's just a range of emotions and this is what it is to be the age that i hate with the other old people (laughs) because this is what it is this is what it is i really like look what 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 i really want to do honestly what i want to do is i want to turn on my mpc i want to load up my fl studio and i want to make beats you know what i'm saying that's what i want i want to play 2k i want to make beats i want to drive the i want to drive to the grocery store in a hot car a nice loud fast car and then i wants to make love i wants to make sweet love to something sweet like peaches, maybe. I don't know. I'm gonna have to ask Leroy about that one. <laughs> I, 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 I divulge nothing on YouTube except for what I just did. Mm. I divulge nothing. 
Next thing you I'm know, saying, I like sweet peaches. You, I don't know who doesn't. You don't like sweet peaches. Something wrong with you. Something wrong with you. Mm-mm. What dessert has the most sugar in it? Peach cobbler. Hmm. <laughs> which 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 fruit is super moist and juicy? Which fruit is super moist? Well, I had an orange, which was super, super juicy. Mo- I should say watermelon. Uh, a good one. Yeah, a good watermelon, extra juicy. Um, Peaches, oranges. Then you have a bite into a peach, and the juice drips down your hand. Sometimes you get right into a peach that's so ripe that your fingers are sinking into the flesh of the peach as you're biting into it. So that your mouth is producing juice, your fingers is producing juice, and it's just mm-hmm. like the only thing ruins it is if a worm pop out that bitch. You know, only you, only you pop but you know, but other than that, then you take that pit out too, because that 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 porous pit that's in there is like, yeah, let's get let's get that out of there. Then once you got that out the way, then yeah. Peaches can be enjoyable. Yeah. Okay. On that note. <laughs> <laughs> on that note, we're at fifty-seven sixteen, Nana. Oh, well, I mean, come on. This is what old people do. do. One topic, like, yo, okay, you know what? We're gonna have to edit some of this shit out. Okay. I don't think that we should edit any of it out. Okay, it just it'll have to be what it'll be, okay? And you know, and the people I mean, don't if the maybe, people don't want it, the people can fast forward or they can watch 15 20 minutes of it and they can move on, you know, as long as no, as long as as, as long as they're giving us some love. And talk about as long as they're giving us some love on the programming, then it's all good. Give us some love on the content. That's all. Give us yeah. a lot of love on the content. Give, give us just give us some love. Like, share, subscribe. Give <laughs> us some love. <laughs> yes, yes. All right. All right, Nana. All let's right, get out of here. We're going to do the whole clap. Let's get out of here. We're going to make it clap. Make it clap. No. We out of here, Nana. All right. I'll talk to you later. You could, could you, wait a minute. Wait. I want you to do the one line. One line. Yeah. Doing it and doing it and doing it well. Doing it and doing it and doing it well. Doing no, it, doing what comes it, next? Doing... Uh-uh. I represent Queens. She was raised out in Brooklyn. That's right. Ba boom, ba boom, ba boom, ba boom. Go Brooklyn, go Brooklyn, go Brooklyn, go Brooklyn. So in my mind, I'm doing those like neon girls that are doing the little Brooklyn ditty bop. <laughs> oh my god! In your mind. In my mind. Hurt your hip. Yeah, and then I'm doing my best LL Cool J, uh, lollipop licking, lip licking, uh, you know, oh do rag. Like my kids, you know, like like my kids said, you know what I'm saying? You know, you're keeping it real sexy when you got ice cream dripping down your chest, down to your genitals. <laughs> yeah, okay, all right, we bugging, but <laughs> all right, my love. All right, Nana, I'm gone. I talk to you later. Tuesdays. All right, later.